It's an alarming time to be a climate scientist. We've seen an endless series of potentially catastrophic milestones. The record for hottest day on Earth was broken again for the second day in a row. In Japan, tens of millions of people are under a heat stroke advisory. That country is on track to break its heat record of more than 41 degrees Celsius this week. And we've just crossed another milestone, the key tipping point in global average temperature. So today, what does it mean that humanity just exceeded 1.5 degrees of warming in the thick of summer, and does it matter? Athens is sweltering, too hot even to visit one of the world's greatest historic sites, the Parthenon. From the Swiss Alps, rare scenes of wildfires. To the woodlands of Greece, the blazes are unrelenting. So July was crazy hot. Heat waves and wildfires were devastating in Europe. More southern parts of the U.S. had close to 50 degrees Celsius at times. Extreme and dangerous heat is baking parts of the southwestern U.S. The National Weather Service issued an excessive heat warning for parts of California, Nevada, and Arizona. You know, it was so hot in Arizona during one heat wave last month. Every single bed in the Arizona Burn Center was occupied because so many people were falling and burning themselves on the ground. Like, imagine 80 degree asphalt, like close to the boiling point of water. If you fall and you can't get right back up, you're in big trouble. These heat waves are not just a natural fluctuation in weather. Man-made climate change is making them more extreme and more dangerous. In Beijing, it was so hot that people started wearing full face masks, kind of like ski masks, but just to protect from the sun. And in Iran's Persian Gulf, temperatures feeling like 60, almost 70 degrees Celsius, which is essentially near the limit of human survival. But even more alarming than the spike is the trend. Take a look at this. Every dot since 1940 represents how hot it was globally, on average, between June and August each year. You can see some years it's up, some years it's down, but over the long term, on a scale of decades, it's definitely up. Climate change is here, it is terrifying, and it is just the beginning. The era of global warming has ended the era of global boiling has arrived. So the bombshell from Europe's Copernicus Climate Change Service, that not only was July the hottest month on record ever for the planet, like the hottest in maybe 120,000 years, but also that for the first time during a Northern Hemisphere summer month, the global average was more than 1.5 degrees Celsius warmer than during pre-industrial times. Now, what does that mean? Because Let's face it, it seems every other day is some story about climate change, something, something. But stay with me. Every year, they track how the overall average global temperature changes from year to year. Before we started relying on coal, oil, and gas, so you know pre-1900s, temperatures on average held pretty steady. You can see for yourself. For each calendar year between 1850 and the early 1900s, you see lots of ups and downs expected variance, little change from year to year. But then, when humankind begins really having an impact on climate, you get a clear and increasingly dramatic upward trend, where we consistently see annual temperatures today more than a degree warmer than we saw 100 years ago. And July, last month, globally, was 1.5 degrees warmer than July in the good old days. And that milestone matters because in the past, our biggest temperature swings globally were in spring or winter. Warmer weather just kind of feels milder. But now to have a super hot summer, you know, summer for most of the world, for that to be even hotter, that's the kind of extreme temperature that over a much longer sustained period really starts to mess with the planet. So let's be clear, a 1.5 degree warmer July isn't itself going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. But we make such a big deal about this number, 1.5, because most of the world, you know, the members of the United Nations, they agreed that's what we should limit global warming to compared to pre-industrial levels. Climate change will test our intelligence, our compassion, and our will. 
but we are all equal to that challenge. Now, we have yet to see a single calendar year reach that 1.5 degree warming mark. Last year, the world warmed around 1.2 degrees Celsius. But we keep getting closer, and every individual month that breaches that target is a recurring reminder that the warming of our planet isn't exactly slowing down. So, what's the bottom line? Well, this year is expected to be the hottest year on record. And scientists predict we'll consistently cross the 1.5 degree mark on a yearly basis within the next 10 years. The Paris Agreement, yes, it's more concerned with timelines on the order of decades. But the politics notwithstanding, the facts are pretty simple and straightforward. Our planet is getting hotter, and every tenth of a degree of difference has a demonstrably clearer effect on not just how often we see wildfires, drought, extreme heat, flooding, and food shortages, but how intense those natural disasters are. We'll be right back.